has the 120 kilo national champion, Tristan Iserod, and his coach, Bill McCarthy, to start off with. If you guys want to make an opening statement and summarize your day, and Bill, this is a chance for you to talk about how good Tristan did today. Yeah, it was a great day. I mean, we kind of came in knowing it was going to be a three-way battle between Tristan, Enrique, and Mike T. Um, big deal of the day was that basically, you know, Enrique beat him last year, and Mike T's kind of been one of his idols in the lifting community. So, you know, for us to come out here and win this today was a big, big deal. Um, we had a game plan going in, you know, hopefully make all nine lifts and kind of hit that Carpino average so we can, you know, check the uh, box for Malta. Didn't happen today. The squat was a little bit off of what we thought. Missed a second bench. So, you know, by the time we got to deadlifts, it was basically hold serve and then um, make sure we uh, secure the gold. And I kind of went to him. I'm like, hey, we can kind of throw a Hail Mary out there and go for that total. And he's like, no, I want to win. I said, okay, that's the plan. Then we go and win. Um, you know, going into that third deadlift, it was basically – Enrique kind of hit that his third deadlift, which everyone in the back kind of thought it was no good, and and it turned out you know the jury overturned it. Um, he didn't know that going into that, so he thought he was pulling for the win when he in fact he already basically won, which you know really obviously helped the the last deadlift and the adrenaline levels, which was good. Um, yeah, so how are you feeling today? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's the best feeling in the world to have the final deadlift in your hands for the win, and honestly. Seeing Enrique pull that last deadlift was a, like you said, a great motivator to go out, go out and execute. Um, and you know, I think overall the day went as well as it could have. That third bench, you know, you wish you could have that one back, but we made up for it where we needed to and got the job done. Yeah. So first of all, both you guys, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. National champion has a nice ring to it. Um, there's an expression that I use oftentimes that there's only one day out of the year when you can become a national champion. And today was that day. Um, and we realized that you didn't hit the Carpino. So I know in some respects it might be a little bit bittersweet. But let's talk about you hit some big PBs considering you're at a lighter body weight. I mean, you tied mm -hmm. your PB total. Um, correct? Yeah, that correct. You hit, that you hit a larger body weight. Might you be able to speak to maybe some of the training adaptations or changes that took place that led to this performance? Yeah. Um, so one of the big things was last year I had a harder water cut, and that was coming off of that competition where I hit the 907 as a 120 plus. And um, this year I think we just played it smarter, and I did not have issues with water at all. So I got to come in and eat a little bit going into weigh-ins, and I think that made a big difference as far as um, fatigue and managing that leading into deadlifts for a big pull. Yeah, so basically, you know, leading into the, the weigh-ins, you know, he was, you know, a little bit less than a kilo under. Um, so we knew that we can get, you know, a ton of carbs in his system. So he probably had about... 350 grams of carbs before the weigh-ins. He was sitting there in, in, in line eating rice cakes while everyone else was kind of, you know, spitting in a cup kind of thing, which really, really helped for sure, the, um, the longevity of the day, which was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, going into this, um, did you expect Enrique and Mike T to be as competitive today as they ended up being? Yeah, so I, um, I never go into a competition thinking about the other guys or – expecting them to not execute, especially knowing Enrique and Mike T. Um, they're great lifters, and they're both lifters that I've looked up to since I started in powerlifting. So I just knew, hey, I have to do what I can do, do my job, and let the cards fall where they may. And in my head, you know, the thought process was, I need to, I know Enrique has a big bench, right? I need to establish a big squat and get a lead and then out deadlift him. And then Mike was a similar situation to where I was like, I need to establish a lead on squat and bench and then, you know, force him to take a, a big pull. Yeah, I mean, obviously coming into this competition, Enrique, you know, had said his training's been down and he was sending him messages last night when he's on the treadmill in a sauna suit. Like he's like, Oh man, you know, and obviously he had a very hard cut cause he only made weight with like two minutes left. Um, and then Mike T you hear stuff online where, you know, he's hurt his back and this and that. And again, 
I'm not going to believe anything I see online. I'm going to wait until I see it actually in person. So, you know, I basically told everybody until I see Mike and Enrique's first lifts of the day, you know, I'm not going to believe any of that stuff because, you know, I don't need to be, you know, false confident and be like, oh, we got this is over. We got this. No problem. You know, coming in when we know we're going to be in a battle. Um, and yeah, it was three great totals today and it was good. And everyone made a lot of lifts, which was even better. So with the, with the future a little bit uncertain because of the schedule coming up mm -hmm. and the opportunity for some lifters to be hitting Carpinos there, what do you envision might be your next opportunity or, or what's next for Tristan Hazelrod? Um, I fully, fully expect we'll take a nice week off this week, rest and enjoy it for a couple days, and then uh, we'll get right back to work. Um, it's totally up to Bill here as far as Hey, what are we planning for? How's training going to look? I trust him, you know, more than I trust anyone, honestly. He takes care of business. Um, I would expect to at least get to go to, um, was it the Cayman Islands? North Americans. Yeah, yeah North Americans. Um, and that's kind of what I'll have in my head. If I get the opportunity to go to Malta, then that's great. But, you know, I don't expect anything to be handed to me. You mentioned uh, you chucked a thing of mustard. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think Bill could probably speak a little bit more to it, but um, essentially with some bit of a water cut, um, trying to get electrolytes in and cramping is going to be a factor, certainly. So mustard has the turmeric and some of that sodium and electrolytes. So, you know, I from him pack a bottle and basically take shots of mustard as the day goes on to go with my my water which is funny because i don't like mustard at all on food <laughs> so this is the one time of year that i actually have mustard yeah something basically i learned from matt about 10 12 years ago um at i think it was nationals in atlanta or whenever that was um yeah so it's basically the, the vinegar and the turmeric for the most part in the um in the yellow mustard will help you um, with the cramping throughout the day. Or if you have immediate cramping, it's really something that will ease the pain too on there, which is good. But, you know, keeping a high sodium level throughout the day is also something that's pretty important. And some people don't actually drink water then, which makes it even worse. Because then it's like, you know, your sodium's through the roof, but all of a sudden, you know, your water dropped because you're drinking monsters or whatever else it is. And you're just like, you know, by the time they get the deadlifts, they're like, why am I cramping so much, you know, so. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Once you. Again. Sounds great. Appreciate thank you for your time. No yeah. You All right. Thank so you. Lucky. All right, next up we have the 84 kilo national champion, Michelle Robbins, and her father, which is her coach and handler. Greg Robbins. Greg Robbins. And uh, to start off with, we'd just like to give a little summary of how the day went for you, and um, this is a chance for you to also talk about how well she did. Well, go ahead, Michelle. Um, well, for me, um, I felt pretty good at first when I came, and then um, I would say, I just started to get tired towards the end. I didn't fuel up properly as well as I should have when deadlifts came around. Yeah, I think she could have used some more Gatorade or something like that. You know, her diets are really good and her training, she trains very hard, extremely hard. In fact, to the point of passing out sometimes, which is which scares me. But I think she could do better if she had something more to fuel her up through the long process. Because even though her workouts are about an hour, an hour and a half, it's more consistent where this is spread out over a period, which is much more difficult for all you lifters. Because you have to anticipate that you're going to have your energy, you know, right out of the chute being really good. And if you don't, you know, drink or consume something to keep those levels up, it's so easy to get exhausted by the end. Aside from all the stress and anxiety 
of just being up there and doing that. It's really remarkable. Um, my name is Natalie. I have a curious, Michelle, I think you're relatively new to the sport of powerlifting like, as a competitor. Is that true? That is true, yes. Yeah. Um, do you have an athletic background? Um, before this, I used to be um, into dancing. I was on my high school dance team. And then before that, I did gymnastics a little bit, but I wasn't really the best at it. Yeah, it's just uh, very impressive to see you as a new lifter, putting up numbers that some a lot of people, you know, will never achieve or work, you know, decades to hit. Um, so I just, yeah, I was very impressed by your performance. Even though, you know, maybe you didn't feel like you had the best day, you won a national title. I think at your first nationals, um, that's super amazing. And yeah, I hope you can be proud of yourself and proud of your performance. Thank you so much. She's her own worst critic, really, <laughs> like most of us. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to tell her, you're just doing amazing. She puts up lifts well. I never did, but in any case, I mean, it's quite impressive for a female, you know, to be able to do that kind of, that kind of numbers. I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> congratulations on winning the national title. Um, national champion has a nice ring to it. Um, so I hope that excites you. Um, just looking at the score sheet after your second attempt in the squat, you missed that, and you chose to remain at that weight um, can you discuss the rationale behind doing that? And the only reason I'm asking is because some competitors, regardless of the reason for missing, you know, in the heat of battle, will sometimes think I've got to go up. Um, for me, I just, it was a technical error, I felt. And all I needed to do was just fix that, and then I would hit the depth to get it. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a good decision. Thank you. So with this being your uh, first Powerlift America Nationals, what's uh, a couple of takeaways that both of you have uh, from this competition? Um, I would say for next time, I need to eat better. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy um, the people that do this, you know, really. I mean, I did kickboxing for a while, not really competitively, but it's, it's kind of the same thing. You get this kind of like a, a brotherhood of people Absolutely. working for people. Because I came in here really not knowing that much about weightlifting. And I left feeling like, you know, this is great. It's like a family. You know, one of the coaches who was coaching um, uh, one of his female and male lifters was nice enough to help us out. And so it was really wonderful. And I think that really helped Michelle out too because she was going nervous thinking, you know, I'm not going to have a coach on site to help me you know, push through all of this. And, you know, it's one thing to have your dad or your mom or something there, but it's quite different when you have someone who's just your coach. It's kind of a different thing, you know, because, I mean, emotionally I'm really attached to, to my kids and want to make sure they succeed. So, yeah, thank you. So suffice to say you guys will be back? I don't think we'll ever not come back, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll always wanna, come. <laughs> you like collecting those medals. I do. Yeah, she did Raw Nationals in uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. When you were 17, right? I was 16. 16. He went down to Aurora, Colorado. But there. Yeah, yeah. Were you? Yeah. yeah, and yep. she, she wasn't as focused as she is now, but she did remarkably well. But I think she's taking it much more serious now. Mm -hmm. I which, definitely am. Yeah, that's well, great. Along those lines, Michelle, do you have a coach? I do. A virtual coach. Who is your coach? Um, Claire is my virtual coach. Claire's I? Yep. Oh, awesome. You're in good hands. You're very good yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. My name is Bryce. Can you talk us through the training process on the way here? How are things going in the last month or so? And how did that set you up for expectations about what numbers you might want to hit at this competition? Well, for me, um, I was deadlifting in the 500s, um, no problem. And I just last week pulled 525 for a pretty easy single. Yeah. And... That's why I was kind of surprised when today my TED lifts, they just were not feeling on point as they should. I think I just was like, I was really tired at that point because I was so focused on wanting to hit my squats and get the right depth on them. Because yeah. I've always had trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So you emptied the gas tank a little bit early and then maybe you were kind of just trying to get through the rest of the meat. Yeah. Okay. That's something you for sure get better at. Good idea. Oh, um, 
just along those lines, um, you did something which is very difficult to do. Um, you missed your first deadlift, and then you came back and got it when, you know, to everyone there, it looked like you'd missed it on strength. So um, I guess tell us about how you were able to do that. Well, I have a really good support system. My dad, my sister, and her boyfriend, they came and told me, hey, you can do this. You, you've you got this. You can do this. You've done this before. You've done this a hundred times. You've done more weight than this. You know, you just have to get into it and do it. It and didn't hurt you had a bottle of Gatorade, too. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> Yes, sir. I have a question for uh, for Dad. Sure. Obviously, when you're well, handling your daughter in the back and you're you know helping load and, and spotting and all that all that good stuff, um, is there any point, especially when she's let's say she's uh, missed an attempt at, at some point, is there any uh, any point for a father like, all right, do I want to hold her back a little bit or do I want to push her forward a little bit? I mean, I want to kind of know what goes on in your head in terms of like the strategy in, in order to you know kind of keep her keep her head in the game. When it comes to Michelle and her lifting, I probably would err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. She's the one that wants to push the heavy weights, not me. I didn't want to ever make it to be the case. I wanted this to be as much her game as anything. Um, I think it's just wonderful that she tries so hard, but it's scary. I think she pushes herself way too hard. Like I said, she's had a few meets where she's come close to passing out or passed out. And, of course, that could be just, you know, proper hydration things right. there. But... I think before when she had other coaches and they would work with her before Claire, uh, especially the ones that were actually on site, they said that she was probably her own worst critic and that they didn't have to push her, say, Michelle, you know, you could probably go a little heavier. Michelle would just want it so bad and would push herself to go heavier. And that sometimes had me nervous. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, you mentioned that you've trained on site with, with coaches. Do you train at a powerlifting gym? I actually train at my, at home. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, does, does competing on competition equipment, calibrated plates with a specific bar, does that uh, change anything for you, or or have you considered training with uh, competition equipment going into a meet before? Um, I think for me, I just need to have plates that are like more even because some of mine are a bit uneven at home. <laughs> Well, you're a national champion now. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think what we have at home is cozy, but I'd like to see you more out in a regular powerlifting gym. It's just tough, you know, with work and everything mm -hmm. and everything else that she does to get to find the perfect fit mm -hmm. that's close by and that has a nice vibe to it as well, Absolutely. you know. But this is fine equipment, what we saw here today, yeah. you know, so it's great. I, I have one more question. Sorry, Matt, do you have a well, I'm gone, oh, gone. Okay. Um, I know, so you actually did the same qualifying meet as Bryce. Do you, you maybe didn't even Farmstrong. know we were there. The Farmstrong meet in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there. That's how Bryce qualified. That's Mike, who just took second in the 120s. He qualified at that meet as well. Um, so I, I, you were kind of on my radar. Just I knew who you were. Um, I think you qualified at the in the 76 kilo class from that meet, and then you moved up to 84. Yes. What's the, what was the rationale there? Is there anything or... You just decided not to diet to 76? <laughs> I just decided not to diet to 76. That's a good enough reason. <laughs> yep. <laughs> along that question, uh, as far as diet and everything, I know you had mentioned prior as far as like, you know, the nutrition, her kind of running out of, of gas toward the end. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna, guys going to make any type of adjustments? I mean, obviously going forward in terms of like nutrition and, and maybe just game planning going into like the, the next week? Yeah, I think she might converse with Claire. Because Claire does nutrition as well, or we might just, my wife and I might research it for her, right. you know. But um, I think that's really where we're finding the problem now. I would have liked to have found it a couple of meets prior, but we really didn't know. Right. Well, you don't know until you know. You don't know, and you assume, oh, okay, if you've got 20 minutes between your next lift, that's fine. Because at home, you would pound them out. I mean, she doesn't take a lot of rest for, for, for a power lifter, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And so now we're learning because of these issues with her nutrition and so forth happening here at the meet. Now we actually can pinpoint the problem and Absolutely. hopefully rectify it. Absolutely. The more information you have, the easier it's going to Absolutely. And like I said, a lot of you guys and other lifters out there give us good pointers, especially for me, which is nice. It's a great community. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Congratulations. Um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Um, we're going to wrap this one, but um, congratulations, and we'll look forward to seeing you at Nationals next year. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody.
Great, I can lean in. Okay, we have one of the greatest lifters of all time, Ray Williams, 120 plus national champion, and his two coaches with him. So um, to start off with, Ray, if you want to just make sort of an opening statement and summarizing your day, and then if you all want to talk about how good Ray did today um, and brag on him a little bit, that would be a good opening statement. Go ahead. Uh, if I could just sum it up in the one word, and I know everybody's going to disagree with me. Everybody's going to um, not agree. Well, everybody's going to disagree with me, but the word of the day, um, words, disappointment, and underachievement. Um, just I didn't do what I physically know I can do. And granted, I'm, I'm limited. Um, my knee has not been healthy for a while. Uh, me and my wife, we we moved the third way across the country like two weeks ago. Uh, so my life has been kind of all over the place. We finally got a grasp on things like maybe a couple of days ago, you know, where I got to where I was eating enough calories and getting enough sleep. But um, definitely, if I had to sum it up myself, um, I'm definitely disappointed. Um, I I didn't do what I came here to do, you know. Um, you know. I'm gonna follow that up with I'm extremely proud, and I told him the exact same thing with what he was going through. The only lift that he missed that we thought he could get today was the deadlift, and I wasn't even sure he should go out for it. He was in a lot of pain, but he's not a quitter. He wanted to go out and see if God would reach down and pick up the weight with him. And um, I am so proud of you. I think it's. I think you wanted to do this meet for you, and you need to ask yourself the question: Did you give it everything you had today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if you were talking to me and I had done exactly what you'd done, would you be proud of me or disappointed? I'd be proud of you. There you go. <laughs> I'm so proud. Um, on my end, one thing we, uh, we've we noticed over the last couple of weeks is uh, his life, as you mentioned, had uh, kind of taking a quick turn and actually for the better for his entire family and for his entire future, his career as well. But that didn't slow him down. He tried every chance he got to still get his training in. Um, and then today was all about trying to keep him on pace, everything. Our entire staff uh, that we got to work together in the warm-up room, we were able to keep him on pace the entire time and keep his head in the game. And at the end of the day, we're all extremely proud. That's the reality. Um, there's a reason why you have this on your chest right now, and you, you did the thing, but there's still more work to be done. And <laughs> one thing you'll know about Ray Williams, he will always be happy about his performance, but he will never, ever be satisfied. He always wants more. He always wants more. Um, that's the reason why a lot of us, we do this sport, and we're in this sport, because we're never, we're never truly happy with that one little result. We always want a little bit more. So... I'm sure everybody can feel that, um, but we're all extremely proud. And here's the thing. When you step onto the platform, you bring back the sport of powerlifting. You bring back an energy that nobody in the world has ever been able to do. You do something for this community and this sport. So understand that even though you are lifting for yourself and for your family, you give a lot of people a lot of hope and a lot of motivation to go after. And enjoy. And enjoy this process. Enjoy. So understand just you stepping onto this platform you did a lot more for a lot of people than you realize so we're all extremely and proud head of you, up man. head up you should be proud see that's why you can't, you can't wallow with these hey. you can't wallow with these folks like, <laughs> yeah like you know you but, can be disappointed but i mean you gotta be proud too i mean it's kind of like me and Coach Gary. We 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 have we that have this Coach thing. Coach Gary, not this Coach Gary. The awesome, the the, the highly Coach esteemed. Gary, yes. <laughs> Been there from day one, Coach Gary. Uh, we have a saying um, that uh, whenever we have bad days and we hit crazy numbers, like if we hit a big squat or a deadlift or something, and I sum it up and I'm like, man, it was a terrible day. You know, we always come back with like, if you could do that on a bad day, I can't wait to see. 
I can't wait to what happens when you have a good day. And um, me and him, we actually, we had like a 45-minute phone call Monday um, where we were on the fence about even competing today. Like, should we pull out? I mean, what's there to gain? Um, you're not going to be nowhere near what you can do. But uh, like I told him, um, I wanted to do this meet for me. Um because, you know, 36 years old, I'm not getting any younger. I got more yesterdays than I do tomorrow. So my goal is just to have fun with this um, and, and make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it, please. Today was a blip in the time I got left. Make no mistake about that. Like, we're going to bounce back. We're going to we're going to get to where we're, we're going we're gonna to get back to where we – that, that goal we set, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. If you know me, you know what goal I'm talking about. We will reach that goal. It may take a little bit more time than we anticipated, but we're going to reach that goal. And you got my word on that. We're going to reach that goal. But it just may take a little bit more time. We may have to take a few more detours than anticipated. But as long as I got my team around me, people who are always going to – be honest with me, because you know the, the the hard thing about this sport is when you're when you're good at it, you accumulate a lot of yes men around you. A lot of people yep. that are quick to, oh man, no, I need people that are gonna be honest with me. Like I don't need yes people around me. I need people that are gonna be honest because that lets me know they love me. They can be objective. They can sit me down, hey bro, I need I need you to give me your ears, because it's a reason God gave you two ears and one mouth. You know, listen more than you speak. So. Um, I appreciate them. Um, fell short today, but, you know, I'm going to go back to my hotel when I'm not around them so I can feel sorry for myself. <laughs> but once we, once tomorrow hits, then it's another day. We, me and Coach Gary are probably going to sit on the phone for a little bit, figure out the game plan, figure out what's next, and we're going to get back to it. That's all it is to do, you know. Um, it's kind of like Coach Prime said, and – I love Dion because he come up with a lot of clever stuff. But he, recently, he spoke some truth, and I've been saying this since he said it: "We coming. I'm bringing my bags with me, and they lose. <laughs> we coming, baby. So um, today was fun. Just just the spirit, the energy in the room, and yeah." <sighs> Squatted nine some with one leg. So, hey, when I got two good legs, hey, we coming. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, we, we can see that you're in pain, right? You're walking around. You're favoring one leg. It just it looks uncomfortable. How – tell us, like, how does Ray Williams get under 960 in pain? Like, how, how, do, you, how do you get there? My family. Like – if you ever see me doing this, and I'm blind, by the way. Like, I'm, I'm one of the blindest people in the world. So, typically, when I'm looking at my phone, I'm like this. So, uh, when you see me like this, I'm typically looking at my family. Like, they're worth it. Everything I go through, all the pain, all the all the ouchies, they're worth it. Like, I do this for them. You know, I've done enough for me. Like, if I hung it up today, I've done enough in my powerlifting career where I could be satisfied. But... I feel that, you know, I got a lot left in me, and I do it for my family. They're my motivation. They're the reason I get up. They're the reason I push. Um, and, you know, sometimes you, you when you get to a certain point in your life, you have to have something that's bigger than you to motivate you, and my family is way bigger than me. To say that I'm proud of you is an understatement. Um, <clears throat> I think the powerlifting world understands that you don't need any more feathers in your cap to determine your legacy. Seven national titles now, five IPF Open World Championships, uh, the heaviest raw squat drug tested in history. Um, 
Are there any more boxes that you feel you need to or want to check in order to quote unquote complete your career? Yes. There's only one. Okay. There's only one. Um, and everybody knows what that is. I don't have to say it. Um, that's it. I do that. I can ride off into the sunset, and we we can, uh, you know. I'm not saying I, I never. Want, I I don't like to use jargon like pass the torch or nothing like that because I don't see myself as that guy. Like everybody else, you know, you know how people always uh, the, the self proclaim this, that, and the third. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I don't buy into all that. Like I, I heard somebody say some uh, goat. Like I, I just like I don't buy into all that. I don't, I don't need that. It's, it's just when you love something, when you put as much time, energy into something as we do this, like I just wanna, I just wanna go out on my terms. Um, you know, when you're, when you're able to go out on your own terms, it's, it's a different, it's a different, it's a different gratification. It, it, it's a different feeling. And I want to go out on my own terms. When I, when I get that number, I'll be happy. Like, um, to quote, uh, not too long ago, I did a meet, and uh, I, I sat and uh, I sat with uh, Kirk Kowalski. Oh boy! And <laughs> and I asked him, like, why did you stop powerlifting when you had so much more in you? And he said, and I quote, "I wasn't angry anymore. I didn't have I didn't have that anger. I didn't have that fuel. And once I hit that number." I know that's going to be my deal. And I know I'm not going to be the same guy. But until I hit that number, I'm going to be that guy. I am him. And I'm going to push until I get it. And I will get it. I just, like I said before, it's going to take some time. Um, we've had to take a couple of detours. But everybody's journey is different. And I'm going to embrace mine each and every day as long as I got these people in my corner. Um, and God on my side, nothing can stop me. I do have a, I have a question for you, man. And it's, it's, uh, it's a little lifted more, uh, more in terms of impact, uh, kind of like everyone's been saying in the room. Um, you didn't have to meet you wanted. That's fine. It happens to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But the one thing I'm, I'm hoping that you saw, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure you did, uh, was just the impact you had on people. It's about walking in the room, um, shaking the hands and taking the pictures, the hugs, the high fives, the daps. Um, let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, let's talk about that first time you walk in the room and, and just, you know, what that feels like. Obviously, you know, uh, being back at Matt's um, and, and just being able to, you know, strap up again, you know, Warm up again, be in the back. You got Mike to share back there with you. Um, you know, a living legend and another living legend just warming up and all that stuff. I mean, having, you know, legendary coaches helping you out, all the good stuff and people walking around. Hey, man, how you doing, man? Let's talk about that for a little bit. Like, what did that feel like just being back, just being back amongst everybody? It felt great, man, because when you have as many setbacks as – and that's why I say uh, put this out there first. Coach Gary, Coach Gary, my man David, my partner, my business partner. If I didn't have a strong team around me, I would have probably lost it mentally. Like, to get injured, to catch COVID, to – let's go back to Chicago. To, to win nationals, to be on the world team, to have that opportunity taken from you because of COVID. You know, the world, we had a pandemic. So, all right, no worlds. Next year, you catch COVID. Next year, you hurt your groin or your hip flexor. And you just, like you're talking about three years. Or you're just training and you're having these constant setbacks. So eventually, 
you find like man, I for a little while I was in a dark spot. Just like, do I still got it? Do I still want it? And then you know, like my career wasn't my my actual job. It was going downhill, and you know, just sitting back like, just got in a real dark place. So to walk in that room today and just to see the young, breast the youth, the young faces, the energy that this sport has now. Like how you talk about me and Mike, me and Mike talking about the young cats. Like, man, you seen these young, man, these young cats serious. Absolutely. Like, man, like, like you you turn on, you get on IG and, oh, man, this young cat over here dead lived in 785. Like, God. So, you know, like, it's, like, these young cats ain't, man. So, you know, that's, that was, you know, because their youth, you know, like, energizes me. Like, because, you know, like, man, I'm 36. Like, my friend Adam Gore once told me, the day you turn 30, you're going to wake up and stuff going to hurt on you you didn't even know you had. Like, I'm talking about if I, if I stub my toe, I'm limping for two weeks now. Like, wait till you hit 40. Uh, wait till you hit 50. I did not know this man was 44 years old. Bro, you're a liar. You're not 44, bro. You're not 44, bro. Stop it. I'll trade you my license for your medal then. Huh? Okay. <laughs> but, man, just to be around these, these, these younger lifters and to see – I see my I see myself in them right. back in 2012 when when I cursed on the platform and they should have thrown me out of the room <laughs> like they should have just been like bro this meet over with like go home bro you ain't got no you ain't got no training you country and you know for them to let me finish the meet and you know like I let my youth and my inexperience take over at certain points during that meet but. I see me in these young cats, and man, it's 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 awesome. Like this sport is heading in a great direction, and just to be around them, just to be around the energy, the excitement. Like you got people who didn't podium, and their smile was just as big as if they won a national championship. Man, but I finished the meet, man. Like you know, like that's the type of energy you need. That's the type of energy this sport needs to. Well, maybe one day get in the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's I. I I think that's still the goal, so that's what you need. And it was just great to be around that again today. And so you do understand you're a big part of that energy mm -hmm. that's in the room. You realize that people see Ray Williams on the marquee, they see his name, like, you know what, I get to live for the Rob Nassau, the Ray Williams. I get to live for the Michael Sherrer. I get to live for the Bryce Lewis. Dr. Ray Williams. Dr. Ray Williams. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> again, just kind of echoing what everyone, you know, everyone in the room, like, again, like, say, We'll disagree with you, and, and I, I feel like I agree with everyone. Uh, we all disagree with you feeling that you had a bad performance. Like your performance, what you do on the platform, trans, like it transcends just lifting weights, my dude. And what you're able to do in terms of being an ambassador for the sport, the people that you're able to bring into the sport, the eyes you're able to bring onto the sport, that that's bigger than any number you ever squat, anything you ever pull, anything you ever bench. So I mean, so. <clears throat> Speaking on behalf of pretty much everyone powerlifting right now, thank you. Appreciate you. And I thank these people. Absolutely. I thank these people. <laughs> we love you. Without these people, you. wouldn't be up here. I wouldn't be able to go home and say, hey, at least I came back with this. <laughs> you know, but, you know, without them, I wouldn't be here. So I'm going to give all the credit to the people that support me, that held me up, because, you know, it would have been easy for me to say, man, I got X national championships. I got X world championship. Man, I'm just going to skip this and, you know, just wait till I'm healthy. Right. But like I said, I wanted to do this for me, and I'm just blessed that I had some people around me that held me up when I couldn't stand up myself. So appreciate you guys. Team Love effort. you guys. Team effort, man. No doubt. Always. All right, well, let's let Ray go. Um, we can talk to him all day. But um, thank you so much for on your latest national championship. Thank and you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, congratulations. Oh.
All right, we have the legendary 120 Mike to share yeah. <laughs> and his handler today, Susie Gary. To start with, if you want to just kind of summarize your day, what it means you, to you to be out there today, and Susie, if you want to talk about how good you did. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. So this was my first national since 2016. So it's been quite a quite a long spell. And uh, um, I didn't even think that I was going to actually be here. About a week ago, I hurt my back, and I called Susie on the phone. I was like, I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to withdraw. She's like, well, take take it one day at a time. We'll see what happens. And things were okay. And I was nervous as I could be when we came out to squats and uh, shaking on the way down, which was new. Uh, but then once I got into the bottom, things moved okay. So we just kind of kept going up. We had no idea, well, not not as clear of an idea as we usually would as far as where we were going to end up. So we were kind of playing that by ear. Um, ended up three for three on squats and pretty happy about that. Uh, bench was on fire. It was feeling really good from training and I didn't have to think about it very much or anything. It was pretty automatic execution and uh, went three for three on the bench just right according to plan. And for deadlift, uh, at that point we kind of could see that it was going to be tight. The podium finishes were going to be tight. So uh, just trying to stay in the game and see what happens. Uh, pulled 325 on the opener. Uh, and that went okay. Probably moved, maybe moved, uh, if it moved a bit slow, it was because I was being a bit hesitant, feeling things out. And um, went up on the second attempt to, what was it, 342.5. And... Um, that was fine too. Again, just keeping things uh, a little cautious to make sure everything held together. And um, my hamstring was a little weird on the second attempt. Uh, so I was just hoping that it would hold together for the third. Um, we put on what we needed for a silver medal finish. And um, after Lugo's third attempt pull got uh, overturned, Susie told me that you know, this is what counts for the silver medal. So I uh, can't sandbag it now. <laughs> so <laughs> so went out and uh, pulled on it. And I could tell after it left the floor that my hamstring was going to be okay. And, uh, you know, it's it's always fun when they're slow enough that you can have a conversation with yourself on the way up. So <laughs> uh, just keep pulling and there we go. So nine for nine day, pretty happy about it. I've never been so happy about a silver medal. So. <laughs> I was just really super proud and excited to work with Mike again. It's been a long time since we've actually worked together. But like you said, a week ago, I said, you know, one, one time I had a back thing where I couldn't even squat the bar. And in a week's time, I was able to come back and, and perform. You never know. I'm like, don't give up hope, but we'll, we'll see. And so every time we talked, he's like, oh, I'm feeling okay. And um, so coming in, we knew it wouldn't be the strongest Mike T ever. But I think we got everything out of him today that we could. Yeah. And, um, you know, being able to pull for second, like you say, it's pretty awesome because being realistic and knowing, you know, uh, as soon as Tristan came off, his coach said to me, so are you going to put three, 372 on? I looked at him, are you kidding? I said, no, <laughs> not, not that I don't believe that he could do it someday, right. just not today. Yeah, we so be I'm really proud just of how well you perform, but also how – you took what you, you know, you took what we knew was there instead of just taking what you wanted to take. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's worth saying too, like it wouldn't have been in those positions to put those things on the bar without good selection going up to that. Like calling for uh, 325 on the third squat was the right choice. Uh, the bench, you know, we got what we thought we would get and that's fortunate when that happens. Uh, but if, if we hadn't, been in those situations if we hadn't been in a situation where you know Susie knew the rules she knew she's a very experienced handler and coach uh, we wouldn't have been in the situation to pull uh, for the silver medal anyway so um, it was definitely a, a team effort proud to be part of the team Mike you're definitely a seasoned veteran of the game you've been in the sport for a really long time um, both as a competitor and 
then there was a period where you weren't competing, and and you know you you probably uh, made more claim as a coach. Um, you had a lot of Mike T fans in the audience today. Um, yeah. you, you're you're legendary, and you you lift the sport up in many ways. How did it feel to be back at the national championships and to be so embraced by the community? Man, how. What a what an awesome experience it was to be here, you know. I mean, the I mentioned that the last nationals I did was in 2016, and that was not great. That was uh, you know, came in quite hurt. Just take what you can, you know, and it was not a good experience, you know. So I'm glad that I can get back here and and at least not leave it on that note, you know. And th there's more to do, uh, but at least we put that one behind us and you know, get to move on from here. And I was super nervous uh, <laughs> coming into it. So since coming back to competing, I've done two other comps and wasn't really nervous for those. This one was, uh, had some nerves going. So it's uh, normal and it's good to see that part coming back too, you know. A lot of athletes, especially coming down to placing toward the end of the competition, tend to shy away from the scoreboard. I was back there. I saw you looking at the scoreboard just as much as most of the coaches. Is that just because of your experience as a coach? Are you usually kind of involved in this? Do you have any kind of mental baggage associated with what other competitors might be doing? I have always been a pretty involved lifter. Like, I don't have headphones on, really. Uh, I'm communicating pretty normally with with Susie the whole time. Uh, I will say though that uh, when we're starting to warm up for uh, third attempt, uh, starting to warm up for deadlifts, um, I, I said to her like, Susie, uh, I know it's getting tight and we had a plan, but I'm thinking crazy thoughts here. Maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe it's time, maybe I want to go for it and you're going to have to see if that's a good idea or not, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> we met in the middle. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. I had crazy thoughts in Arizona going to deadlifts, too. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe this is normal, too, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Other questions? Uh, yeah, it's your, it's your first national meet since 2016. What did it mean for you to be back on the national platform and be ultra competitive? I did not expect to be I, – I suppose I expected to be – on the podium maybe, but I didn't know how close it would be. Uh, I deliberately don't look that much at my competition in the lead up. I think that's a, that's the main source of error that um, things like social media and stuff like that can bring to mm -hmm. lifters as you start seeing your competition do well and you think I've got to push it more mm -hmm. and start making bad decisions. So it kind of, I lift my lifts. I know that I'm training hard, uh, and I don't need any more encouragement than that, you know. Uh, so I was keeping to myself on on most of the rest of it. Uh, but then once I – really the last two months was kind of dinged up, and then about a week out, like I said, I got fairly injured. Uh, so I really had kind of low expectations <laughs> coming into it, uh, but was really happy. Uh, that everything held together. Goal number one was to stay in one piece and got that checked off too. Took a bit of tape, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know you're pretty heavy on data collection. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're healthy, let's rewind to two, three weeks ago or something like that, what kind of performance were you expecting from yourself today? Um, not a whole lot more than what we ended up getting. It would have been nice to have a bit more on the top end of the of the deadlift. Um, the squat, I don't know. We were within range. It wasn't like we were like 20, 30, 40 kilos off. I would say maybe if we could have added 10, 10 and change to each of the lifts, uh, squat and deadlift, that is. That would have been pretty cool. Um, but, yeah. Um, tell us about your kind of recent bench technique change and how that's translated to your top end strength. I think 210 matches your best raw meat bench, like best, your raw PR for meats. I think it's close to it, yeah. if, if okay. not well, there, but yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> you would know, you would know <laughs> I was just going to say, according to my spreadsheet, yeah, too. Yeah, so. <laughs> So starting last October, um, I put uh, like a sinking sink bench into my program, mostly as like an assistance exercise. I wanted to just kind of dabble with it. And uh, after a few weeks of training it, it ended up stronger than my uh, light touch bench, which is interesting because I've tried this before and it that hasn't happened. But, you know, when you try it and now it's the stronger style, then that's what you go with. And uh, I've just been kind of developing it since then. There does seem to be kind of a, a sweet spot between sinking enough but not too much. And um, just something about the last training block, I have feel like I really found the groove on it. Uh, there's, it's hard to explain even, but there's like a certain feeling that's, that comes with the position, uh, where the bar is how my elbows are, how I bring the bar down uh, and and touch the bar path that you press off the chest with. Like there's just, there's a feeling for all of it. And it was, it had been feeling really good in training. And today it felt just like it did in training. It couldn't have been, couldn't have been better. Yeah. On, on the back of that, another technique question. Compared to most deadlifters, you have a pretty unusual deadlift style. Mm-hmm a lot of knee extension at the start before you kind of get yourself into position. Where did that come from? How have you kind of optimized that? Well, I've got a lot of concerns about the IPF implementing a deadlift depth rule. So it's been <laughs> mostly in preparation for the eventual yeah. deadlift depth. No, it, <laughs> um, it goes back a little more than a year. Um, I hurt my back. Again, about a year ago, you know, it was a fairly minor thing, but in the kind of rehab process, I started just using that style because it felt a little more comfortable. But then th again, through that process, it ended up as strong or stronger and it felt better. It felt like a, sh like a less at risk position. And so, Hey, if it's stronger and it just feels better then go with it. And, um, it's fairly unorthodox, but it, Hey, if it feels good, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, moving forward, um, I was from this meet uh, going into, I guess, uh, future training box. Are there any uh, variables, any um, new technical things you think you're going to be working on, just you know, based off of meet performance? Based off the meet performance, probably not so much. Um, staying healthy is the biggest thing, right. and I'm starting to. I feel like I'm starting to. Uh, zero in on how much, like how much of certain movements can I tolerate? Like I know comp squatting, comp deadlifting, I can only tolerate a certain amount of it, but that's not the whole of my training. Like I'll have to find other things that uh, still let me train and, and get better uh, while kind of, you know, paying attention to what can I tolerate on the, the more, uh, more taxing movements, let's say. So it, that's a, a little bit of a back to the drawing board after after this. I've got some ideas that I want to sketch up, but it'll be mostly around load management for the for the more taxing movements. Yeah. I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you don't put headphones in. You're not a present, like your, your mind is present during the entirety of a meet day. Um, I, I think that you do practice some amount of self-talk. <laughs> yeah. You have some mantras or things yeah. that you're reminding yourself of. Mm -hmm. well, can you tell us about some of those things if, if you're comfortable? Yeah, I, it, I suppose it's always a bit different. I'm just kind of talking through the lift. Um, yeah, sometimes there's a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes not so much. And I'm fairly okay with it being, being a fluid thing. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't. I don't feel like I have to always say the the same things. Um, like today on the bench, there just wasn't that much. I'm just saying same thing as last time. Like it, from five lifters out, do exactly the same thing as last time. And it went great. There was a lot more on the, on the squat and the deadlift, uh, in particular around like trying to calm my own nerves around, uh, uh, my back and everything and, um, trying to 
trying to think of something to do to cope with the shaking on the squat uh, negative. That was something that I was hoping that just bracing more would help. It wasn't the brace. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but that was new. The one thing that, uh, you know, as a coach, you often, you see someone go down real nicely and they come up really slow. For me, I was like, if he can make it to the hole, he's going to be fine because <laughs> right. the up was easy. Right. The down was the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. um, Mike, I think I heard you in the warm-up room at one point say, after, I think it was after your third deadlift, like, just, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to just kind of think, have you talk about how much fun you had today and how much fun you had this weekend. Sure. Um, I suppose there, I've developed a lot over the years, you know, and I've placed second at meets before, and I've got a bunch of pictures of me sitting on a, standing on a, second place podium looking grumpy and then you know a year goes by and I'm not even at the competition you know so I know I feel I feel like I have better perspective now that I know that this isn't a guaranteed thing and that I can be on second the second place podium today and the only person that that might feel bad to is the second place guy everyone else in the room thinks that's awesome uh, and, you know, I think the, the intervening years of not being there at all, uh, second place is, uh, I'm happy to be there. I'm, I'm happy to have lifted, to have represented myself well, uh, to show up and do what I, do what I can, you know, and it's, wasn't a PR day, but those get to be hard to come by and we'll get back to training and we'll put something together. But I was, I was glad to be there today. Well, we were all happy to see you out there, too. Thanks. I have one, uh, one last question for, mm. uh, for Susie. Um, obviously, seeing you, people that actually don't get to see how the sausage made in the back. <laughs> and, and you get to see Susie bouncing back and forth, back and forth. I mean, you have the opportunity, of course, to work with two living legends at the same time. And they're pretty close together um, you know, throughout the competition. Uh, what is there anything you're doing mentally to make sure that I mean obviously different athletes require different type of stimulus uh, stimuli rather um, Are there any any things that are going on in your head to make sure like, I like, make sure Mike's on this one I make sure Ray's on this one like uh, what was going on you know I guess with you mentally just making sure that your guys were up to, up to snuff and, uh, Well one of the great things is with Ray we also had David and a couple other people that were helping load weights and Mike's pretty easy easy going he's like whatever you think whenever you want me to go and he just kind of is there he's present but he's not like a basket case he's really easy to <laughs> deal good. with uh, believe me i've dealt with people where you have to calm them down every second right. for some reason so um it was nice because it was pretty much just they trust me enough that if I pointed and said, you're up, then they went. Or can I go to the bathroom? Yes, you have eight minutes. So, I mean, it's great because the people that I work with, um, I know every now and then, like with, with Ray, I had to reassure him because he was, you know, he was in a lot of pain. And actually before his last deadlift, I, I told him how proud of him I was how much I loved him, and that if his knee started to hurt really badly, I wanted him to let loose of the bar. Because right. I'm like, it's not worth making it so bad that it's going to be months or surgery right. or something like that. And I think some people need to have permission to, to give up a little sooner. Because um, there were other people saying, no matter what, just keep pulling, don't stop, don't stop to him. And I'm like, if it hurts bad, I want you to put that thing down. Right. I'm like, and he's always like, yes, ma'am. So, you know, um, he listened. But so with the two today, it was pretty easy, a little reassuring for Ray when he was, you know, in a lot of pain and just uh, kind of helping Mike realize were... it was okay to be a little nervous because he told me he's nervous. I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's all right. It'll... I think you were talking to me quite a bit to try to keep the nerves just keep the nerves yeah, yeah. You so would, you would talk to me for a while but then when I'd we leave, were leave you be yeah one or two lifters out you would leave yeah yeah so it was, it was a good it was a good balance so it was kind of a almost like talk a little and distract <laughs> yeah. and then let him have his own space because i could tell you were more nervous than sure. i've seen you in a while mm -hmm. but it it wasn't like it needed to calm him down right. no one else maybe would have known but i know i've known mike a long time so sure. i'm like well let me just distract him a little yeah it was appreciated oh good <laughs> <laughs> she's like she was such a pain i'm never working with her again no <laughs>
Sure. Awesome. All right. If there's no more questions, we'll let him go. Cool. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you very We have a rising superstar in the sport, 18 year old Luella Bowden, who won the 84 plus kilo weight class. And we also have our coach here. If you can just start by kind of making an opening statement, summarizing your day, how it felt out there, how your day went, and coach, if you want anything you want to brag about on her, please take the opportunity. No, yeah, of course. Um, honestly, this whole weekend has been super nerve wracking because I've never been to such a big competition before. Um, but today felt felt equally good and bad. There were some parts that I was really proud of and some parts that were just <laughs> so silly to even miss. But overall, I'm just really excited about the whole competition, how it went, and seeing all these different amazing lifters just like lift alongside me. Yeah, I mean, for her, it's it was an amazing experience. And again, watching professionals do what they do and those little those little things that's hard to even coach right where it's just like you got to see it and experience it for the first time yourself before you actually so she had a lot of aha moments and learned a lot and um yeah obviously lifted lifted really big luckily we didn't need even our final lifts to still win a national championships because we missed all of them. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, again, that's me being a, a new coach to, in the powerlifting world as well, right? So taking into account, hey, we traveled, right? We were on a plane. We were here for a few days. We probably should have came over and done some lifts a couple of days ago, light, moved. Um, so, so it was a good learning experience for me as a coach, too, moving forward. So, but she did amazing. She, whatever we called for and put on the bar, she went out and did her best for sure, so. Well, I showed a lot of maturity out there. Um, I think people in the audience probably would not have seen how nervous you may have felt in the back warm-up room. Um, how long have you been lifting? Where does that sense of maturity and composure come from when they say bar's loaded and you're walking up to the platform? Oof. That's a good question. That is. Um, honestly, I didn't really start um, lifting until July when I reached out to my coach and um, asked him because I started in track, but then he was like, you know, you'd be good at powerlifting. So I, I learned about that. I learned all the rules and yeah, just since July and my first meet was in October. Uh, and the maturity part, I, I still don't get, <laughs> but I, I really try to just focus all of my energy to what's on the bar, focus on the judges, um, and their calls mostly. <laughs> um, and I just try to get through the lift, try not to make a big show out of it. And, um, yeah, just focus on on the next jump. Um, so I have a question. Um, you obviously you're a national champion on the open level. What are your plans going forward? Do you plan to do junior nationals? Um, yeah, talk about that. 
For sure. Um, yeah, actually, after my first competition, the first thing we wanted to do was try to go to jun- uh, sub junior, junior nationals. So um, that was actually the first competition I signed up for after um, my October meet. So I will be going to Scottsdale, um, my home state, and um, I'll be competing there in June. And yeah, we're hoping that we'll be able to make it to the world team and go to Romania. For the record, uh, put her on blast. Uh, She said she was going to open with uh, all of her lifts that she missed today. Oh, we'll hold you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want the, I want everybody to hold her yeah. accountable. Please do. We'll just submit them today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, quick question. So, we're around uh, the first attempt uh, for deadlifts. All right, not bad. We get to the second attempt. It starts to sink in. I'm about to be a master champion. What did it feel like when it actually sunk in? Like, you know what, this is, this is, this is about to happen. What did that feel like? Um, it was around right before my third lift where I was like, whether, like, obviously I didn't, I didn't make it, <laughs> but whether or not I do, I will be like number one in, in the country um, for at least this year. But it, it was just really just alarming at first, like, Wait, all these eyes are on me. All these all these people are going to see this. And I it was just a really overwhelming feeling. Um just this nervousness and like all of the just tension that I had just sort of fell away and I was like, "Wow, I'm going to be like first number one and it's it's still like I'm still processing it it doesn't even feel real right now so it's I don't know it's a coming and going emotion oh, yeah, I have a question um congratulations that was awesome thank you uh since you're so new to the sport do you uh do you follow the sport and who are some of your favorite lifters that have kind of paved the way before you mm, yeah I <laughs> That's that's difficult because I've only just started following it, um, but just just some lifters that I'm trying to aspire to meet or or to replicate are uh, Mihaela Reeves, uh, yeah, um, Leanne Hewitt and Bonica Brown, like the top top three lifters for me. um yeah i met ray williams today who is still still crazy to think about his massive total and squat um and yeah just watching watching these people up close or over or on youtube it's just been yeah yeah just like some really big shoes that I'm trying to fill. Another question for you. Um, a lot of lifters find that competitions are as much about competing as it is about learning what you can change or improve for the next time. I know it's pretty early post-competition. Your coach talked about learning some things that you can only ever see in person. What are you taking away from this competition that you might want to change or add or subtract as you move forward? Yeah, that's, that's really good. Um, but I would say I've learned a lot about, um, the pressure that, that I feel like the, the eyes that are on me and learning how to deal with that. Um, cause this is like the most amount of people that have ever seen me. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, just taking that new experience will help me later with other competitions. Um, And yeah, I've learned a lot about how that pressure can really affect my technique and the different lifts I do. So I'm, I'm going to be working a lot on just like staying cool under, um, massive amounts of weight and, uh, 
just trying to have more fun at competitions because yeah it it was it was stressful for the most part but I met some really cool lifters that that really made it more bearable I just have one for you coach um, yep. obviously you saying that um, you're, you're fairly new in terms of uh, the powerlifting uh, sector you honestly I, I had a chance to kind of watch you operate in the back you're very calculated very <laughs> cool and calm um, what are some things that you took from this competition obviously um, I mean, maybe off the top of your head that you, you, you're thinking about in terms of maybe uh, training uh, for her um, in the future that you feel like you could uh, really kind of help her uh, get better at going into the next meeting? Yeah, her training is really interesting, honestly. I, I don't believe many people would believe what little work we've actually done. So I've been more of the part of holding her back quite a bit. So I know her, her limit is really high. So um, the last thing I want to do is jump too much too soon. Um, even though she's lifting a lot, I know there's a tremendous amount more in the tank. So, but when I first met her, I only let, let her work up to a, a certain amount in the gym. And I'm like, okay, this technique is uh, too questionable now. So we pretty much stripped the weight all the way down and started from scratch, from square one. So, um, and then trying to work, make sure she has strong support throughout the midline. Um, really healthy knees and ankles and just everywhere. Hope working on some tendons and, and stuff works so she can be here for a long time hopefully and not uh, the long game the long game <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely um but my takeaways from today were were really a lot about timing mm -hmm. so um i did spend a lot of work planning out when people were lifting and what time uh, when this person's lifting when are we gonna take this lift how much so um, I didn't really get a base that off of I didn't use anybody else as a guideline but I was able to come up and create my own kind of on the fly um, I feel like it worked pretty well um, uh, yeah, I mean, she got the win. She was gonna, she was gonna win probably regardless if I whatever I I, I did. But yeah. Um, yeah, another question. Um, you said that you're 18. Are you still in high school? Uh, yes, I am. I'm a, I'm a senior in high school. She has class tomorrow. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, track hasn't been, like, a very big, strong suit. Um, I've had some advantages, you know, because of my coach, because of my strength. Um, but it's not something that I could really see myself really pursuing professionally. Um, I'll, I'm still going to participate, you know, in clubs and, um, different meets, but I... I, I don't believe that I'm going to be yeah going collegiate with it. Yeah, we're definitely, her focus totally is powerlifting for now. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, so, we're, I mean, so she, she well, in March 5th, so like next weekend, we're doing a Highland Games competition. So she loves doing that. She broke three ju sub or junior world records in Highland Games a few months That's ago, awesome. too. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. But her shot put and skills are... <laughs> I don't know why they're not where they feel like they could be. <laughs> so, yeah. so, but we've been working on a lot on. She obviously has that static strength, right. but we're working a lot more on the explosive power and development there. So that's where she has the world to grow. So. So you do a lot of. I mean, so you have some hybrid coaching going on. I mean, obviously, you have like a, a powerlifting going on. You have some hybrid. Uh, Highland Games and things of, of that nature on so um, so you're you're honestly you're you're just taking the whole strength sport by the storm pretty much you're just trying to do it all which is awesome um, so you like the Highland Games mm hmm <laughs> yeah it's it's, and it's, and it's, it's there's fun. a bit of carryover uh, for 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 both sports absolutely um, so. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to word this uh, where it actually makes sense. So is is there like a, a specific type of split that you guys do uh, with their training uh, in order for her to get uh, advantages, obviously, in, in both sports? 
So Highland Games, we just absolutely complete do for fun. There's no peaking or focusing on it at all. Literally the day before we practiced, she threw several <laughs> throws for the first time the day before she went and broke the world record. So it's not, a, by no means was it this long journey of technical analysis compared to other Highland Game right. throwers. I'm like, okay, grab it between the legs and throw it over your head as, <laughs> as high as you can. Right, right. Did it go over the bar? Good job. Okay. <laughs> right. um, I mean, it's definitely a little bit more technical than that, but... Um, and you get to wear a sport field, so that doesn't hurt. It's exactly, cool. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole reason I, I like it. Um, but our splits and timings, I know for juniors coming up, I have already a seven a seven week and then a, a deload awesome. time and then another seven week jump that we're going to go for. So. All right, any other questions? All right, well, Kelly, congratulations again. Lou on your national, open national championship, and we wish you luck at junior nationals and on to junior worlds from there. A sub junior world. Right? So. Yep. Matt, do you want to yeah. put a shameless plug? If the if nah, not well anymore. But you can. Oh, Matt. Uh, so, shameless plug for Matt Gary's um, attempt selection and game day handling ebook. So, um, yeah, find him on, on Instagram <laughs> or uh, the internet somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn everything that you yeah, need to know about game oh, okay. handling. Sweet. Uh, probably a good study before June. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere on the line, we'll find you. Yes, sir. Right. Well, thank you, guys. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.